Great news, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely unbelievable news. Sensational news straight from the horse's mouth, as you might say. Harry and Meghan have apparently decided they've got nothing left to say. They've said it all. Uh, they've talked about the royal family. They've talked about the racism they face. They've talked about the struggles they've had uh, moving from Montecito uh, to Santa Barbara, back to Hollywood, uh, back up to uh, Washington. It's all been a nightmare for them, but it's all over now, apparently. No more Netflix, no more spare books, no more writings, no more rantings, no more lectures, no more podcasts. Nothing. Nothing at all. Nada. Zilch. The, the whole thing has crumbled around them. Harry and Meghan have basically come to the end of their tether, and thank goodness for that. And all I can say is salute. Uh, it was great knowing you, and we look forward to never hearing from you ever again. <laughs> but like, somehow, I don't really think that's going to happen. Um, some of the best news I think I can bring you, uh, the, probably some of the best news that I've ever been able to report to you actually this morning, uh, on the front page of The Sun, uh, it says, Harry puts a sock in it. How about that? Um, Prince Harry, of course, uh, a man who is not uh, unfamiliar uh, with speaking out about terrible things that have happened to him, a man not unfamiliar uh, with doing Netflix documentaries, about doing podcasts, about talking about his mental health, uh, doing a book, of course, called Spare, uh, in which he gave interviews all over the world uh, to various different uh, individuals that he liked, like Tom Bradby. Um, over in America, he gave interviews to Oprah Winfrey uh, with his wife, Meghan. And, of course, that was where it all kicked off, wasn't it? When they left Britain, these pair uh, of privateers, when they left Britain to go uh, and seek their fortune elsewhere, to get out of the public limelight, to get away from the horrible fishbowl that was being part of the royal family in this country, they decided that they had to get... Uh, some closure. They decided that they had to get some peace and quiet, some privacy almost. We want privacy! We want privacy! Who can forget that South Park um, uh, comic, uh, that South Park cartoon, uh, which was so hilarious. Uh, it seemed to be beginning of the end, though, for them, because people started making fun of them, people started taking the mickey out of them, and once that starts to happen, and once they start ridiculing you, you kind of know that the game is up. But let's have a look back at to what happened with Harry and Meghan. Back in 2021, they went and were, went and been, became inter the interview subjects of Oprah Winfrey. Um, they said that an unnamed royal had raised the issue of the skin colour of their children. Do you remember Oprah's reaction? Say what? What now? They asked about the colour of their skin? What? Of course, they've said that wasn't really what they meant to say. In fact, they started blaming the British media for saying that. Then Harry wrote in his book Spare that William, his brother, had knocked him to the floor in a row about Meghan. Then he said he blamed William and Kate for urging him to wear a Nazi uniform to a party when he was 20. He then said in his book that Harry, uh, that his father was unhappy with the amount of attention William and Kate were getting in 2015. And he also said that um, the royals had shown absolutely no willingness to reconcile with himself and Meghan. I mean, even as recently as what, a couple of weeks ago? when they were moaning about the high-speed chase in New York, the near-catastrophic incident that happened while they were trying to get home from an awards ceremony. Absolute and utter cobblers, as it turned out to be. Uh, they said they didn't even hear from the royal family. who should have called them to find out. And I think what they realised at that moment was when they complained that they were being chased by the paparazzi, just like his mother had been, that all backfired. It all went south. It all went wrong. And what started to happen was that every story that... We, that, that Harry and Meghan cooked up seemed to disappear within 24 hours because every time you looked into it, there was nothing there. Every time you investigated their allegations of racism, every time you investigated their allegations of being chased, every time they said there was a near-catastrophic incident, people looked into it and went, well, that sounds like a serious story. Let's check it out. And then it turned out there was nothing really there. The racism story that they gave to Oprah Winfrey, nothing. No mention of it in spare. Piers Morgan getting the heave-ho from ITV as a result of him saying he didn't believe Meghan Markle because she wanted him out. Nobody says anything about that anymore because guess what? He was right to say what he said. And even Ofcom said that he was right to say what he said. So now Harry puts a sock in it. They're not going to do any more Netflix documentaries. He's not going to write any more books. She's not going to say anything else either because why? Apparently, there's nothing left to say. Well, maybe they should have made that decision a bit earlier and maybe you shouldn't have bothered to write the book that was so embarrassing and so um, interfering and so kind of um, unbelievably crass about his own family. Maybe he shouldn't have revealed the things that he revealed. Like, for example, uh, that he had a frozen todger 
or that, you know, William was circumcised, or that, you know, he took a load of drugs, but he's all right now. I welcome the fact that they've got nothing left to say. But do you really believe it? Can they actually stop the publicity machine? Will they be able to live without it? They've literally got nothing left to say. Good. Well, thank God for that. And good night. <laughs>